Oh boy, guess it's time to dive in on this one. If you're familiar with the likes of Hololife, then you should know what I'm talking about. For a while now, I've fallen victim to this almighty rabbit hole, and I'm here to discuss it at great length. These are generally idols from across the board, all ran by business executives in Japan where they market all these idols to perform music and release hit songs on every occasion. In addition to this, they've also been live streaming games as a means of interacting with fans on the side, and I believe this is where their popularity started to blow up, with many clippers, fanboys, and borderline simps worshipping them in all aspects in some way, shape, or form. I think Kariji Ali said this best, but to sum it up, Once you've fallen into the Hololife rabbit hole, it's impossible to not simp. Therefore, I simp. And for better or for worse, or both, I still don't know, I guess truer words have never been spoken. I, myself, have my fair share of VTuber idols I greatly look up to and always want to support when I can. I could dive into all my favorites and make this an even longer video than it should be, but I want to keep things focused for what we have in store today. For a while now, there is this new game that's been popping out of the woodworks, fully dedicated to the entirety of Hololive as a whole. This will be what we know as Holocure, save the fan. Should stress, by the way, that this is completely unofficial. This is all a fan game, but this should be interesting either way, so let's see what we got cooking. The story for this game is right to the point, and the more I think about it, is actually pretty damn accurate to many fans out there. I was surprised where they were going with this. So the gist is, there's this dark force going around, corrupting all the fans in their blind devotion towards their favorite VTubers, or Oshis as the term would be. It's simply up to the Hololive stars to snap these fans out of their shameless simping and restore peace in the world, defeating the darkness within. Let's be honest, who hasn't been through this phase at least once in their life. I know who I'm talking to. The gameplay itself is what I call simple but surprisingly effective. It plays like a top-down endless beat-em-up with RPG elements attached, as you can level up and upgrade your abilities for all the experience you collect. If I want to compare this to anything, imagine Vampire Survivor turned into an entire Hololive game. Funny since not only was this an indie game released this year, but they even played this game themselves a while back. So full circle I guess. The enemies here consist of the many fan bases and icons built around Hololive, from Kiara's Fried Phoenix Army to Ina's Takadachi. If you're really into this sort of thing, you're going to wholeheartedly appreciate all the little details sprinkled in. I'd imagine there being fans for all Hololive members, but I've yet to see all of them due to my frequency of dying quite a lot, which is standard stuff for games like this. It starts off nice and simple, but the further you go on, they're going to be throwing more fans your way that it completely overwhelms them. And I think I think I just found the textbook definition of sheer irony. In any case, the gameplay works, and when done right, I do enjoy games of endurance when I see them, so it's nice to have something fun to play in my downtime if I ever want to. There's two modes ranging from the stage mode, where you defeat the boss to advance, and the endless mode, where you survive for as long as you can. I'm always going for the latter though, as between the two modes, at least from what I've played, I've hardly gone any further to really see much of a difference. There's only this one stage, at least at the time of recording this, and from what I can tell, the pattern for the fans they dish out seems to be the same every time you replay this. So you'll basically see everything with every replay. This being based on Vampire Survivor, every time you level up, all the upgrades and abilities you get are randomized, so it helps to add to the replay value. You'll get all sorts of advantages like shield buffs, speed boosts, having different items to even the odds such as axes, bombs, glow sticks, those cursed BL books, that one dragon tail we love so much, and the list goes on. You'll need to make your best personal judgment when leveling up. Figure out what upgrade you really need at that specific time. Otherwise, go with what you feel most comfortable with. You can also grab Holozon boxes for coins and upgrades. You get them from defeating larger enemies, and they usually give you at least one to three boxes with every drop. So do invest into these whenever you can. It'll be all worth it in the long run. Right out of the gate, you can select one of the Hololive Myth members to play as. First, we have Amelia Watson. When I started playing, this was perhaps one of my favorite favorites of all the members. You can shoot from two different directions, which is her only major downside, but as you upgrade, you'll get pretty helpful advantages, such as Bubba coming along to help you attack enemies. That's always cute to see. There's everybody's favorite goober of the lot, Gargura. She can attack from all angles, and her water-based upgrades are not to be taken lightly. She's capable of far more than we realize, much like Gura herself, now that I think about it. Ina has her trademark tentacle powers, as you'd expect, and no, I'm not going for the obvious 
serious jokes here. Sorry, folks. You can summon the Ancient One and send in bands to attack the Void, showcasing her dark magic at its finest. If Amelia was among my favorites, Kiara is a really close second. Along with having decent attack power, her abilities and upgrades are amazing. It's really great to see, such as leaving a trail of fire and this dancer move that surrounds you in a force field of sorts. Once you power her up, Kiara's got amazing kill potential, releasing the almighty phoenix within. And Callie started off feeling like she needed some getting used to. Her abilities are fine, slicing away with your scythe and having upgrades revolving around her insta-kill potential. But from what I've played, this sort of playstyle doesn't really click with me either way. That was until an update dropped for the game. And with it came Kelly's much needed buffs. She's more well-rounded as a character, making her playstyle much better to justify her murderous tendencies. You can also unlock additional members, currently from the council lineup specifically. And this is where the game's currency system comes in. All the coins you collect can be used to unlock characters as well as stab boosts and perks if you just so happen to unlock the same idol. Anybody who's played a mobile game can easily piece together what's going on here. Yes, there is a gotcha system in this game, and all the character unlocks usually ask for a thousand coins a pop. Not to mention the amount of coins you get from holozon boxes are always random, landing anywhere from 50 or higher to just above the 100s. And as you upgrade armory and abilities, the cost of each upgrade adds up, asking even more coins than before. At face value, it's designed to be so addicting that you can't really help but grind as much as possible for that one idol you just want to unlock. This is partially why I found myself investing more time to this game than I really need to, if only just to get familiar with how each character plays and trying my absolute hardest to unlock that one I really need to complete the set. And given how gacha games work, you can either luck out right off the bat or while pouring more hours into the game until the RNG gods are feeling merciful to you. I'd have just as much luck as actually... <sighs> What am I saying? Of course I've been interacting with my Yoshi every chance I get, and I always treasure every moment I can. Eventually though, and by mean four grabs later, I found her in my inventory, so I guess praying the crony really does work out after all. I should stress that this is mainly early build as I'm writing this and gathering footage prior to Callie's buff patches, further emphasizing we're bound to get more updates later down the line. This includes the likes of the Hololive Gamers featuring Kuone, Okayu, Fubu, and Mio. I'd imagine eventually we're going to see the entirety of the Hololive members here, but in the event that ever happens, I'll be keeping an eye out. In any case, how do the council members hold up? Going by the order I unlocked them in, Sana's playstyle is surprisingly on point with me. She can shoot out planetary orbs, knock them back with the power of space, and when you really buff her up, it's astronomical. I humbly apologize for that. Fauna is actually decent. She starts off rusty, but I find she quickly picks up with every upgrade. You can shoot leaves from three different angles and even rely on saplings to boost your attack power, so that's really helpful in the grand scheme of things. If you're in need of hope, Iris has you covered. She can shoot particle beams much like Amelia, and her special perks include healing up if she's ever in a bind. It's all really nice stuff going for her. Crony literally defines precision timing. The clock hands attack from all sorts of angles. The big hand being where you're looking at, the other one being what's closest to you. It feels random at times, but you eventually pick up on it soon enough. Her time bubbles can also stop enemies in their place for a short while, and all in all it feels like you have to time everything just right to get things going. Mumei feels like a middle ground of sorts. She's got nice upgrades like having a buddy tag alongside you, but I think the most surprising thing about her is her special skill, which we're gonna talk about soon. That leaves Bay, who is a literal jack of all trades. As someone who indirectly brings chaos upon herself, she definitely lives up to that element in gameplay. She can shoot dice blocks at every angle and can even turn enemies upside down. That is hilarious. In short, she's really fun to play as, and I'm grateful I grinded long enough to actually complete the current set with her. Speaking of upgrades, it's important to get those buffs whenever you can. Whether it's increasing your boost or attack power, maxing out your hit points, or increasing how much experience or coins you get, all these perks can go a long way towards increasing your chances of survival. When I started playing, I usually reach around level 20 before I start dying a lot. Maybe even reach level 25 if I was lucky? But the more I upgrade, the more I got to experience throughout the game, going as far as to see things like Fubuzila or Bay's rat army. Behold, my brethren.
I quickly touched on special skills, but let's talk about those right here and now. There is secondary attack power which you can use to unleash a powerful blast upon enemies. It's unlockable so you have to spend some coins in the shop, but once you have this special ability, you're free to just go haywire once that meter builds up. These range from Kiara's Phoenix Fire to Amelia's Stopping Time to Crony's Time Blast, space spamming multiple dice at once, you can go big sauna, unleash this giant tree that heals you, and then there's Mumei's Ventar which kills everything on screen. I mean when it works it works but what the hell bro? I could go even further with this, but what you see is basically what you get. Not a lot to look at, but it's surprisingly fun all the same. Whether you're a fan of Hololive or just want to see what the fuss is about, you might find something worth enjoying here. And as someone who's been into Hololive for about a year now thanks to friends sharing clips with me, I think I consider this the next big addiction game. There's no way I'm gonna stop playing this for more. And with more idols on the way, it's going to be a treat coming back to this in the future. If you want to try this out for yourself, I would strongly recommend it, whether you're a hollow fan like the rest of us or just want something to do in your downtime. Otherwise, it's nice to just sit back, recline, and watch the show, just like we do with our VTubers on a regular basis. Okay, so I just need to get this out there right now because since I started playing Hollow Cure, a lot has happened in the last few weeks, and it really put everything into perspective for me. Uh, for starters, I learned Tsukumo Sana will be graduating at the end of this month which I can imagine is pretty heartbreaking for everyone who's ever looked up to her and loved her greatly. It's really sad to see her go, and as a dedicated crony for life, I can't help but feel for all the Sonalites out there just mourning for their well-beloved Oshi. The sad thing is that she hardly hit the one-year mark, so this feels like she's going way too soon. But I ultimately learned that this was her decision to go, so... All I can do is just wish her luck, whatever she decides to do next. And I really took the time to think about how this was affecting not only everyone around her, but those around me as well. I was talking this out with my friends, and uh, this whole thing feels like a journey in itself. Which leads me to another thing. We should all be striving to do better in these difficult times. There will always be days where you'll just be stressing yourself out over the most minuscule things no matter what you do. I just want to say that if you're ever feeling that way in any capacity, just know that you are never alone. We're all in this uphill battle together. We should always strive to improve ourselves no matter what, and I think for as long as I live, I'm gonna hold on to everything that's happened in the past few weeks as a permanent reminder to just keep moving forward. Cause that's all you really can do. Not just for your Oshis or anything, but just for yourself. Cause your personal well-being takes full priority over anything else. Never forget that. Forgive the extreme shift in tone in this video, I just really wanted to express what I'm feeling right now, and I'd like to get that out there as a personal reminder to not only just myself, but for everyone watching this. And I hope we can always continue doing our best no matter what. Thank you all so much for watching, this is Miss Dan signing out, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya folks, take care. Is big. <laughs>